<laughs> oh, man. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Jeremy here from The Quartering and Borderlands 3, other than a few random launch glitches, has had a pretty successful launch. We'll have to wait to see what the total sales numbers are. Randy Pitchford has already declared victory by saying that the PC version is double what it ever was at its peak in Borderlands 2. I don't know what their projections were. I don't know what their expectations were, but if that's what it was, then good for them. But this article on this website has nothing to do with Borderlands 3 operation, but it is being slammed for having a problem with dwarfism and disability. Literally what? I'm not kidding. This is a perfect example of why you never listen to these people because just a few months ago, it was widely reported that Borderlands 3 doesn't have quote midgets as it's not super sensitive. Gearbox said that it has moved away from using certain derogatory terms in Borderlands 3 in an interview ahead of gameplay reveal earlier today. Chris Brock said that the studio was looking to move away from specific terminology, although other wording has remained in place. When asked whether Gearbox developers had a desire to move away from certain terms, Brock said it had made a specific attempt to remove the term midget, a word often used to insult, describe extremely short people, Destiny, from the game because it's not super sensitive. You know, as, look, you don't see folks uh, like that very often. So it's always going to be something that people are a little, uh, I guess, uncomfortable with or unfamiliar with would be the better word. I've often bounced back and forth, you know, what to call these people. I prefer to just call them by their names, uh, John or Jane or whatever. But, uh, you know, whatever, I guess I'm out, I'm not with the times. A hands-off demo revealed that midget, a term with which was used to denominate diminutive subclass of multiple enemy types in previous games in the series, is no longer in use. Instead, smaller versions of the enemies are referred to as tinks. I'm surprised nobody's offended by that. So back in about a half a year ago, six months ago, Borderland already tried to please people who were offended. Guess what? It wasn't enough. Guess what? It's never enough. Discounting Claptrap's metal visage, Sir Hammerlock is the first friendly face you meet in Borderlands 2. The last survivor of Lyrsburg, surrounded by frozen wasteland, he's dressed from head to toe in Victorian and sports a deeply unconvincing, unconvincing accent. He is the series comedy Brit and researcher of local phenomena, a role full of fulfills by sending you out on expeditions, a role he fulfills, sorry, uh, to document and destroy. One of the first optional missions to seek is Midge Mong, a local bandit with dwarfism who rides on the back of a bully Mong, a four-armed ape-like creature from Borderlands lore. Ah, what an unlikely symbiotic relationship. Two deadly creatures cooperating to survive this harsh environment, says Hammerlock. Also, the midget looks a little human backpack, and that's funny. <laughs> I mean, it is funny. It is funny. Um, though rarely expressed so explicitly as this, dwarfism is a constant target for comedy throughout Borderlands 2. Players frequently come into contact with enemies labeled midgets who speak in pitched-up screams. Sometimes they're carried piggyback style on the shoulder of larger comrades. It's made clear that dwarves are considered inherently funny, a spectacle to add to the sense of strangeness on Pandora's alien surface. Look, I mean, what can I tell you? I know for a fact it would be extremely unlikely that one of you watching this video wouldn't like somebody out there watches my videos it has dwarfism or I don't know, little people. I don't like calling it that. It's all, it's all dismissive. I just, I don't know. I just say you're short. Maybe I don't know. Um, or call you by your name, but it can be funny. I, I, I mean, what are you supposed to do? It's just maybe some people think it's funny because they're uncomfortable and they don't know how to act or talk. I mean, Hey, it's like, uh, you can't, really deride people for not having that lived experience. Uh, 
I think that it's okay to, I don't know. It's okay to feel uncomfortable if you're new to something. Of course, there's an in-game explanation for their existence. Back before the events of the first Borderland, miners found a key vault fragment while digging and discovery altered the workers, sending many insane and physically mutating others. The lore, however, doesn't help the real life dwarfs who live with the consequences of depictions like this. Are you, come on. Who wrote this? This, whoever wrote this has to be uh, Jeremy Peel. I mean, is this the, is this the hill you, you're going to fight on? I mean, what about, um, fat people, people with glandular problems? They're inherently funny. Nobody's, well, I guess people are reading those articles too. I, I don't understand. You're complaining about something that literally has lore behind it. It's not like they just threw them in there for literal comedic relief. There's actually lore for it. Peter Dinklage, um, uh, has described jokes about dwarfism as one of the last bastions of acceptable prejudice, unless also you include white males. A 2010 study conducted by University of East Anglia found that 80% of people with dwarfism has re received mean words and that 12% physical. That's obviously not okay. Making them subjects of video game bad behavior, I imagine, doesn't help that. Yet I'm yet to find a dwarf in any borderlands who isn't designated as an enemy. And here we go. Here is the real problem. Look, I'm trying to balance being understanding here. It's something that you're born with. You can't have any control over it. And it's crummy if people are mean to you over it who are over the age of 12. Okay? It's stupid. But, I mean, if you can't make fun of something, then you can't ever truly own it. I mean, why walk around looking to be offended all the time? What kind of way to you know, way of living is that. I would just accept it and, and I just roll with it. I don't know what else you can do. Ours is a society of people which are drip fed, drip fed through history, media, literature, and popular culture. The idea that dwarfism is at best undesirable. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, right? Why? I mean, of course. Most average height people meet, get to know a few, if any, dwarf people in real life. So cultural representations matter a great deal and massively influence perceptions, shape attitudes, and inform behavior. Uh, that's probably a somewhat fair statement, although you'd have to be a real ignoramus to be like, oh, okay, um, well, Peter Dinklage is really smart in Game of Thrones, therefore all other people with dwarfism must also be smart. Like, those people are just dumb. I mean, um, collectivist-minded people, in my opinion, are also dumb. Borderlands joins a long line of representations of dwarves as either punchlines or in Austin Powers, uh, as in Austin Powers. I mean, Mini-Me, come on. He was evil. Or curiosities like the Oompa Loompas and Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. The term midget in itself is considered derogatory associated with freak shows of P.T. Barnum and public display of dwarves for novelty entertainment. Unsurprisingly, when Little People of America surveyed its members, said that 90% said they never wanted to be referred in that way. Well, yeah, I don't know. What is the, I mean, it feels like that's some term that's changed several times over the years. Um, I, I don't know. Why would you just, ref I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would say anymore. I, I just, just call it what it is. If no offense is meant, then you, you shouldn't be taking any. Uh, this isn't a history borderline developers are completely unacquainted with. By the pre-sequel, midgets have become little scavs. And in Borderlands 3, they're called tinks. Again, this is why you don't worry about it. You just do your thing. Because it will never be enough and people will always be offended. The fact that Gearbox seems aware of this offense might cause... Only makes the fundamental problem um, that tinks exist as enemies at all more exasperating. Why? Because they can't be evil? As far as I know, dwarfism does not affect the brain. So they would have the exact same likelihood of being evil or not. In fact, if what you say is, uh, you know, that they experience such a rough life, wouldn't you think they'd have a higher propensity of, pe of people to, uh, you know, maybe snap? I don't know. To make matters worse, Borderlands 3 evidently has a wider problem with this presentation of disability. 
the very first mini boss you face, Shiv, has a hand and arm to four minis. It would be a different matter if similar disabilities were presented among your allies, but instead it seems exclusive to the children of the vault, which by the way, fits lore. Friendly NPCs in Borderlands sport prosthetics, but they're either voluntary, like Atlas CEO uh, Ray's Strong Fork, who replaced her arm to get ahead of the Hyperion dating mana department, or part of a cool backstory. So, again, there's a clear divide between heroic disabilities, heroic disabilities, and robotic eyes or steampunk limps, and the bandit ones that leave their sufferers with impairments. Those who grew up with real world disfigurement often feel as though they're left out of society, which does suck, obviously. Uh, I doubt any of them would be uh, really upset about this video game. And this is coming from the same people that whined about, or Polygon whined about uh, Rage 2 having uh, a clef lip. Who cares? It's a video game. It's not real life. I, I just don't understand how deeply you... I mean, this is a company Randy by, run by Randy Pitchford. I mean, <laughs> that's an endless well of things to complain about. This, this is Olympic levels of reaching. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and I really hope you enjoyed it. Above you'll find some links to watch more videos as well as a nice big button to subscribe which I hope you'll do. If you did enjoy it, make sure before you go that you leave a like and a comment on the video because you are the number one reason this channel continues to grow and I appreciate you.